that fateful day that it was lost was described by many people as uh, putting a hole in our heart. Uh, and we needed to replace it as quickly and as expeditiously as we could. After that initial shock, all of New York galvanized. We were gonna rebuild and we were gonna figure out how to rebuild better. There was a great uh, public outcry to replace the buildings. The government decided that the replacement should become a matter of public decision. What we needed to do was make a statement, and that statement needed to be in the form of, of, of buildings, but driven by people. This was a lot of challenge, a lot of pressure, a lot of eyes looking at us, and a lot of, frankly, a lot of self-doubt about were we doing the right thing and how were we responding to the challenges of rebuilding after 9-11. The entire engineering community, the construction industry, everybody went, basically went back into a soul searching. We had to think what it means. We had to think what is expected from us, not only by the developer, but primarily by the public. There was a lot of pressure to design a building that was special, but there was also a lot of pressure to make sure that it was the best practices brought to bear. One World Trade Center faced a Janus task. It had to stand tall without displaying any hubris. Almost impossible for a building that's the tallest building in, in the Western Hemisphere. Designing a building is, is never an easy task. Designing a super tall building is even harder. And now here we're faced with the challenge of designing a super tall building in New York City with the world watching us. They began to look at why were these structures so vulnerable? What can we do better in the future? We knew that the current codes would not be sufficient, so we had to basically design the building to satisfy a future code that hasn't been written yet. So we had to collect a lot of the reports that were available at that time and basically use our judgment. You don't want to make new rules that would be too conservative and basically cause dramatic increase in costs. I mean, it all has to be reasonable, but obviously address the issue. I think the confidence we had in each other was it allowed us to come up with the right choice well ahead of the code being changed. And now we find that code is actually matching our ideas. We always thought this building should be about simplicity and geometry. Clean, strong, monumental as possible and that meant making it look as simple as possible. Although the building is far, far from a simple. The height of the building in profile to the top of the parapet is exactly the height of the original Trade Center. So there was some remembrance that we wanted to infuse the building with. Then of course there's the geometry of tilting those walls in and the cleanliness of it and the base and how to make all that work together. So it was really quite a lot of things coming together. And then of course the last item is the life safety issues. One thing we could do, and we actually were proponent of it, it would be better to have a robust concrete core. So the concrete core adds stiffness to a very slender building like this, but more importantly, it houses all of the safety and security services. For the first time in the city, we introduced a 14,000 PSI concrete. It's much stronger than any rock that you could find. The office building, because of the large spans that they want to have, it lent itself to a steel structure. So now combining a concrete core with a steel structure is just not an easy task. It's not that unusual in many places around the world, but in New York City, because of union issues, this was something that we were pushing the envelope on. It was great team effort between Tishman Construction, who built it, WSP, who engineered it, and us at SOM to make this work in a new way. What is less visible to the public, there is a whole city on grade and below, and it extends way beyond the footprint of the tower. It very came quickly to a, a decision that we would locate critical services for the entire function of the space, including the train station, uh, the retail spaces, the towers themselves, in the safest possible locations. We have vertical shafts in the towers that service the train station. Uh, 
So there was a constant dialogue between projects to plan how these services could be routed. So that on its own created significant challenge and rethinking how to go about not only the design but also construction. This extraordinary, you know, 85 foot deep uh, foundation had to come to ground level. And then once the steel emerged above ground, once everyone could see that yes, we have a building, it was a tremendous relief for everyone working on it. What did it feel like when it came above grade? I guess it was one, a sigh of relief because as towers go, uh, the thought process was already developed and the, the equipment was already in place. The building itself is a prism, it reflects light. Actually, if you stand back for miles and look at it, the, the light bounces off. That luminous light becomes part of One World Trade Center's palette. The building constantly changes. It's a very experiential building. The more you look at it, the more you see. One of the greatest attributes of the building is that we were able to make it democratic. Everybody can come in the building and go up to the top to the observation deck. And that was some, something that existed originally and something that we definitely wanted to have again, and that is the opportunity for everybody to experience this building in some manner. Prospective tenants, their first reaction is uh, a jaw-dropping one of a great gasp as they approach the windows and see the, the, the view for, to frankly the Atlantic Ocean. Um, and then as they walk the floor, they realize the great depth of the floor plate. I think for the most part, it's a little bit of shock and awe, and you know, people are very impressed with the construction. The building itself has really become a catalyst for the whole area, for the whole lower Manhattan, for New York City uh, itself. It's amazing how people embrace the new design. And so you see, you know, a lot of people walking around, sitting there, enjoying the environment, enjoying the, 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 the park and, and, and the whole vibrant nature of the, of the new design and environment that, that is being provided. I feel like uh, the reconstruction of these buildings and of the World Trade Center site has allowed me to participate in the healing of a wound, but also look forward to the future. When I see this building, I think we did the right thing. I think it stands there as a proof that we can, as a proof that we will, and we're not going anywhere. What it, when you get up in the morning and that darkness fades away and, and the sun is there and your eyes say, wow, this is gonna be a great day, and everybody says that. And when you look at this building, it really amplifies that effect. Every time I see One World Trade Center, I feel a surge of pride. As a New Yorker, I almost feel maternal toward this tower, this giant, tallest tower in the Western Hemisphere, but it inspires love. It's beautiful. It does what it's set out to do. It's tall, it's strong, it's, it's humble, it is luminous, and it changes constantly. It's beautiful.